Git is part of every development project. We all need to save our progress and we also need to cooperate in writing complex software. However, as the number of cooperators rises, you will need some handy Git skills to solve the problems that you will face. Now the three commands workflow git add, git commit, and git push is probably no longer enough. You need to learn git common problems and the handy commands in order to become a git master, just like the master branch. So is this another git tutorial? No, this is the git challenge. It's a series of git problems that I have designed to help you grow your knowledge in steps, where each step represents a problem that you could face in everyday life while working with git. The git challenge covers many topics that will come in handy and help you navigate through everyday software development processes with a minimum amount of inconvenience. I have set up a GitHub repository that you can clone and there's already a setup script that will help you get started. So if you want to code along with this video, you can simply follow the setup steps that I'm going to go through right now. And if you're looking for a solution for a specific challenge, there are also chapters in this video so you can immediately skip to that point. Let's get started. Now, the first steps into the setup is to go to the Git challenge repository that I've set up on my GitHub. You need to fork this repository by clicking on the fork up there and create a new fork. You will see a different screen. You just need to go ahead and make the fork. Now, once you've completed that step, you can copy the URL and from your own fork, not from this GitHub repository. Otherwise you won't be able to push the changes that you make to your local repository. Now open up your favorite uh, editor, hit git clone in that terminal and clone that challenge repo from the fork that you've made. You can see there are a couple of Python files, a readme that walks you through the steps of the setup. So we're gonna basically follow those steps you've already forked and cloned. And then you will need to change the mod of the setup.sh. So you basically need to make the setup uh, script executable. That's what we're trying to do. You'll see it has done some work. It's basically causing some troubles in this repo that you'll have to solve through those challenges. So once you've completed this setup step, you can hit git branch and you will see that each challenge has its own branch. We're currently on the master branch and we're going to go immediately through the first challenge. So challenge number one, finding local changes. We're going to go to the first challenge branch and we're going to do that by typing git check out challenge 01. In every challenge there is a readme. We, uh, this readme will provide you with the goal for this challenge and maybe a background story or under which circumstances this kind of uh, problem could arise in git while you're working with it. So for example finding the changes that you've applied locally without committing this is something that could happen very uh, often. So we're going to find the changes that you've applied locally without committing because if you have already committed and pushed you could go to the github uh, website and there you could, see, you could see a diff between the work that you've done previously and the commit that you've pushed. So instead we're going to be working locally because you didn't commit yet. So for example, you could have made changes to this armstrong.py, the calculator.py. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to type git status. Now this will allow us to see the current status of the branch. So for example, we can see over here, there are three files that are modified and we are on branch challenge 01. Those changes were not uh, staged for commit, so we didn't add them yet to git. Now the command that we're going to use to find the changes that we've done locally is git diff. If you hit that enter, that will show you the difference between the local changes and the last known commit that you've actually committed. So we can see over here with the minus, that means you've changed this line and according to git, you've replaced this line by changing it to 188.10. Now there are also other changes that we see over here. You've, uh, you've added this diff print by and so on. So this is very handy to easily see what you've actually done the previous day. Now in each challenge, there's also a solution uh, file that you can review if you're stuck and you couldn't figure out what to do and it will show you the expected output and the command that you could use. Challenge number two, find the differences between branches. Well, the first thing that we're going to do, we're gonna to switch to challenge number two branch by hitting git check out challenge zero two. Now the goal of this challenge is to find the difference between two branches. And this is something that could happen uh, since you're working in a cooperative environment. So your colleague could have implemented a very cool feature. You want to see how does that differ from the code that you've already made. And this is where you will need your Git skills to actually find the differences between two branches. We've already used the git diff command. However, now we're going to add one more uh, term to it. We're going to git diff master. This will actually run a diff between our current branch and the master branch. You can basically apply that to any uh, set of branches. It will always diff the one that you are currently on 
with the one that you write in the diff. And now we can basically see differences between our master branch and the challenge to branch. We can also run a diff on a specific folder, and that will basically show us the difference between all the files in that folder and how they changed on the two branches. So here, for example, I'm gonna diff the docs, and then you can see there is an extra space that was added and that's something that I only have on my master branch and not on the current branch. Now, challenge number three, editing a commit message. Now, this is something that's going to happen a lot. You've made some changes, you've committed them, but you didn't actually write the correct message or you forgot to mention something or there are some more changes that you need to add. So in this challenge, you will basically commit the changes that were made to the source folder with this message update Armstrong. However, this source folder have multiple other files like the calculator, the hello.py, so three files were changed, hence your commit is not actually representative of what actually went on. And in that case, what we can do is run git log so we can actually see the commit message. So to edit a commit message, we will have to type git commit minus minus amend and hit that enter button. This will open an editor for us. That editor will already contain the previous message that we've written, which is updated Armstrong. And here you can write as many lines as you want. I'm going to add this also updated hello.py. And then once you're done, this is nano. So you will need to hit control O to actually save that output and then control X to exit nano. Now let's check it out by hitting git log. And we can see that the message was actually changed in this commit and we didn't have to do another commit or reverse our work. So that's pretty awesome. Another problem that now we can easily solve any day that we face it. Challenge four, undo the local commits. This is a very common issue in everyday work life, especially in software development. You write a function, you delete a function, you commit it, and then you realize, all right, that was wrong. I should have done something different. What should you do in this case? Well, you should solve this challenge. In this challenge, you will basically first delete the divide function from the calculator, commit that, and basically find a way to delete the commit without actually undoing the works. So first, without restoring that file to its original state. So what we're going to do is that we're going to first add that file that we've modified because we thought that was the correct action at the time. And then we're going to basically commit it by typing git commit minus M and writing that message out. Yeah, removed a function by mistake. All right, git status, our branch is clean. We've done our work. And now we realize, all right, we shouldn't have done that. How can we actually revert that work? All you have to do is hit git reset. And then you add the minus minus soft, which stands for the soft reset. And then you type the head in capital letters till the N1. Now, the soft is very important because this will only delete the commit, but it will not undo the work that you've done on the file. Now, if you hit that git log, you will see that we've basically deleted that commit. And when we type git status, we will see that there were files that were added. However, they are not committed anymore, which is pretty good. So now we're free to basically edit that commit that we've done. Now, the second part of this challenge asks you to recommit and then undo both the commit and the work. This is the case where you've certainly made a mistake. You're not trying to uh, edit that commit. And in that case, you will have to type git reset. And then instead of the soft, you're going to use the hard reset. And you're going to type head tilde one. This will actually revert your file to its previous state. As you can see, we've basically got the divide function back and it will also remove the commit from the log history. Now, pay attention to the number after the head one. Uh, you could basically replace that number with a higher number and then it will revert multiple commits back. So if you set it to two, it will go two commits back, delete those commits, and then delete the work that you're doing with it. So use this wisely and always pay attention when you're doing a hard commit that you will lose the work or you could be basically reverting to an older state. Challenge number five, emerge conflict. Now, merge conflicts are very common. We're going to first uh, move to the challenge five branch by hitting this git checkout challenge five. Now, the task for this challenge is to add a new Bower function. This function will take one number and will basically multiply that number by itself and return it back to the user. Once you've written that function, you need to add that function to the calculator.py. And then once you've done that, you will need to add and commit that file. So I'm going to hit the git add source cal calculator.py git commit minus m. Uh, added Bower function. Now I'm going to do a git push and see how that how it will go from there. So I'm going to push through the origin challenge five. 
and you can see that the push has actually failed. The updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This could happen a lot when you're cooperating with other people on the same branch. They do some work. You also do some work. You're both working in the same file. You're both maybe working on the same function. And then you will get this kind of merge conflicts because you've both edited the same parts of the file. Now, this isn't something to worry about too much. The next logical step in this case is to run git pull origin. In our case, we're going to run git pull origin challenge five. And now we can see there's a conflict. We found a merge conflict in source calculator. So it tells you exactly in which file you, uh, you had that merge conflict and that the automatic merge failed. Solving that merge is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go to that file and you will find that Git has added some lines. There will be a hit and a commit, the incoming change. The incoming, uh, it's actually what's on the github.com and the head is where you are actually at. So now you just need to make a decision which one is the correct one, which one should be kept. You choose one and you delete the rest of the text. It's as simple as editing a file. Once you've done that, don't forget to run a git commit, fix the merge and fix the conflicts. And then you can actually run a git push to that branch and you will not have merge conflicts anymore. Now, challenge number six, remove a file from a git commit. So in this challenge, you will basically modify a couple of files randomly and then you will commit the whole source folder. This is a very common mistake that people do when they are working with Git. They commit a whole folder or they just run git commit dot. And in this case, you have basically committed some files and some changes that you didn't properly want to add to that push. So how do you actually take that? Now we've edited those three files. We're going to add the whole folder. So git dot and run this git status. I can see that I've added three files. How can I take one of them out of this commit? Well, the answer is simple. It's literally written on our screen. You just have to type git restore minus minus stage and you can basically give it the name of the file or a whole folder if you want. So in this case, since I do not want to um, commit any of those changes, I'm going to restore the whole source folder. Now, challenge number seven, reverting to an older commit. Now, git commits, they bile up. You make some changes today, you make some changes tomorrow, and then after a week you realize that one of the features were actually broken. And then you want to figure out where did it actually break. So for example, in this case, the calculator is broken. Every time you run a, an addition, it doesn't output anything. When did it break? Well, we don't know that, right? So the best way to do this is to look at the log of Git and find out which commit may have updated that calculator dot by so i'm scrolling down and you can see there was a commit with a message updated calculator code so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy the hash of the commit that was before it because that commit is probably the one that broke it so i need to go to a point in time before that commit so i'm going to run git checkout and give it the hash of that commit and now i'm going to run my calculator and see if it actually runs so i'm going to hit the one with the addition five another five and it actually works and now we know which commit actually broke that feature we can review the code we can do a bunch of stuff we might even just start editing from this point if it was such a broken uh, version from that point on now you can also revert back from this uh, commit from this older commit to the newest commit by hitting git checkout and then you give it the name of the branch challenge number eight revert specific files to older commits the goal of this challenge is to revert some parts of the code to an older commit. We want to undo all the changes that were made to the .py files and leave all the changes that we've made to the challenge.txt, the solution and the read. We're going to look in the git log to find a commit that has actually updated those files. So in this case, you can see that the second commit has actually updated the .py files with lovely changes. So this is probably the commit that we want to revert to a point before it. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to run a git diff to compare those .py files with the files that we have in our master branch and see what actually changed in them. And we can see there are many changes that has happened on this calculator.py, the same thing on the hello.py and so on. But how do we actually revert those files to that version that we have in the master branch? The answer is simple. We just run git checkout. We give it the name of the branch that we want to revert to and the folder. The moment you hit enter, you can see that changes are reflected on the screen. We've actually now gone back to the version that the master branch has, which is pretty good. That's basically what we want. Now, challenge number nine, share the credit with another contributor. 
This is something that you see a lot in software development. You ask your colleague for help. It's really nice to give them the credit that they have actually helped you with this challenge. This is something you can do by um, adding some lines to the commit message. So you do the work just like usual. You hit git add, you hit git commit. And then in the commit message, you start typing whatever the commit was about. And once you're done, you add one of those lines. So you can add co-authored by another co-authored by. So if you're basically giving credit, if you're trying to give credit to multiple colleagues, you just add co-authored by another co-authored by, and then their names will also be added to the commit, which is pretty nice. And that's something that you should also do, especially when you're starting software development, give credit when credit is due. Now, your last challenge is to design your own challenge from your experience with Git, you're trying to learn it, find some edge cases or some cases that you find interesting, design a new challenge, just like the ones that you've seen here. And if that challenge is good, if it's well written, if you've given it some good thoughts, I'll be happy to add it so that everyone else will be able to learn from it. This is a community give back. So give back to the community. So you will help the next generation learn Git properly. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and see you guys next time.